Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, just before noon, West Coast time here at 1126 a.m. Thursday, June 26, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the earthquake 3D globe shows a, a little point seven there across California. Noticing a little bit of uptick here off the Cascadia subduction zone overnight and this morning. Got uh, some movement stirring up here in the Blanco fracture zone with a four-pointer being recorded here about five o'clock this morning. That uh, is associated with a strike slip boundary out here. I'll show you guys on the oceanic crust map. You can see that uh, area of the plate boundary between the Juan de Fuca and the Pacific plate, Pacific plate here to the south. Uh, that should amplify some strain further into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Also some movement up here north. It's not shown up on the USGS map, but it is on the EMSC with a number of threes, including the upper 3.9 uh, towards the northern end here of the Cascadia subduction zone. So we do have some activity stirring up out there. And it's starting to show inland as well uh, with some strain quakes being reported over here across Nevada. I know it's a ways away from the plate boundary, but that's how you get the strain on these uh, these uh, fault systems that are well away from the plate boundary because of the strain out here. So we got some further movement into Nevada. Stirred up about... Uh, oh, Looks like about 2 o'clock this morning or so. Lasted for a couple hours out in the Sheldon National Wildlife Refuge. I was uh, out here a few years ago and investigating a swarm of quakes, uh, although that was a little bit heavier in terms of the multitudes out here. There was a lot of volcanic, older volcanic activity out here. Pretty much I was driving on obsidian roads, like driving on glass out there. But uh, it was uh, in the experience, not a whole lot out there. But uh, there's quite a bit of older volcanic activity out here. We're getting uh, some pressurization going on in this region, uh, resulting in some earthquake activity. Uh, up into the Pacific Northwest as well, around Mount Rainier, one earthquake right now, well, within the last hour, uh, up at the summit area. Uh, so let's double check that, see what we got here across that region of Mount Rainier right here. There's been a couple out here in the last week or so. Uh, one seismograph station off here to the west. I'm surprised they don't have anything up at the summit area. Uh, it does look like there's a number of earthquakes out here. Uh, if we're looking at that one in the last hour, well, that could be this one right here. But what about all these other ones? <laughs> there's quite a bit of smaller uh, earthquakes up there. And I'm sure quite a bit of snow out there that could have you know, an effect on... Uh, the runoff of the water could cause a little bit of uh, rock slides, um, land adjustment, so to speak, out there. So that could be what we're seeing there with the uh, whole bunch of these little quakes going on. It does happen a lot during the uh, uh, the warmer months when the snow starts to finally melt out there. Same for the Mount St. Helens area. I've been getting uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity around there as well. Um, you know, the snow's got to melt, and it's going to run off, and it's going to loosen things up there at the surface uh, northern california here got uh two earthquake or three of them excuse me two from yesterday one just before midnight here another 2.4 uh, just got to watch the southern end here of the cascadia but right now it, it almost looks like uh, when you look on the globe here there's quite a bit around the northern and the southern end so that would put a whole bunch of strain out there across the area uh, in its entirety across the Cascadia. Bay Area of San Francisco, pretty quiet. Uh, same for the San Andreas Fault here. Nothing going on across this area for now. Uh, extreme Southern California. Well, one earthquake it looks like outside of San Diego. 2.6 this morning. It is uh, well off the Elsinore Fault. I'm not for sure which fault system is this is associated with. But uh, a little bit of activity out there been a little spotty across San Diego we really haven't had any uh you know major earthquake activity out there and they can get some big ones here across this area uh, but for now just a little small 2.6 from this morning also a bunch of small microquake activity out there across the San Jacinto fault zone and some around the Elsinore fault here but uh, overall looks like just a typical day there across Southern California with a uh, really nothing of any abnormal movement for now Ridgecrest starting to fill in quite a bit here. All right, uh, further out and about, 
um, pretty active up through the mountain ranges up into Yellowstone. As uh, far as specific activity around Yellowstone goes, let's go see what we have for the uh, activity today. Uh, let's see here. I do see one earthquake around Mary Lake. That's going to be this very small spike. But aside from that, uh, there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity out there. Some movement south into the um, around the Jackson, Wyoming area, it looks like. But uh, for the most part, uh, pretty quiet up there across Yellowstone National Park for now. Uh, earthquake activity out there in the uh, plains. Uh, oil fields still starting to kick up. Well, they have been kicking up here in the last 24 hours. Some moving up into Kansas as well from yesterday. Uh, but most of the oil fields down south here across the Permian Basin still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity. The new Madrid Seismic Zone, nothing going on there for now. Same for the uh, eastern portion of the country. Uh, Puerto Rico Trench down here looks like it's starting to back off there as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, only one earthquake after midnight. That's going to be a 2.7 here. Fairly deep, though, about just about 50 miles deep outside of San Juan, Puerto Rico, towards the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, so far, so far, the largest earthquake in the last 24 hours goes to the 6.2 from yesterday uh, after midnight. That goes to a 5 or a 4.9 across the Philippines area. Been pretty active out here across this region, but. Uh, so far to start the day, just some uh, minor to moderate earthquake activity here globally uh, with some noticeable upticks, as I noted here across the Cascadia. Um, Middle America Trench active, but that's that's given on any given day. Same for the uh, Peru Chile Trench. Some newer movement up around the Greenland area. I've been getting a swarm of activity up here recently. Let's see what we got. USGS is reporting that. Over the last 30 days or so, there's been a, a you know, a, a more up, a little bit more uptick than normal across this area of Greenland. Um, for his large earthquake activity goes, it's a way, it's ways away from the plate boundary. I don't know if this is associated with any uh, volcano out there or not. Looks like it's just offshore, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. For now, uh, as I noted, there's a 4.3 from early this morning. Uh, across the rest of the globe here, uh, New Zealand down here looking uh, a little quiet south here along the plate boundary. Still quite a bit of movement along, along the uh, northern area of New Zealand into the Kermadec Trench, but uh, nothing big going on there for now. One little lonesome earthquake, 4.9, filling in this little seismic gap zone, but uh, I believe that's from, that's still somewhat old here. So over the last couple days, it's been relatively quiet across this area of the plate boundary. I'm sure that will fill in. Uh, Japan, some deeper quakes up there across the region. Got to watch the subduction zones. Going to be um, probably seeing a bigger quake out there soon. Uh, across the area of the well, Java Trench here. Pretty active. It does look like we got some further movement uh, towards the Andaman Sea area. Quite a few threes, even a four-pointer up there in the last 24 hours. Uh, a little bit of movement up around the, uh, where is that at? China area, it looks like. 4.5 this morning. Uh, but aside from that, uh, pretty quiet there across the Mediterranean, just some twos and threes, very minimal actually. And the rest of the Atlantic, aside from the one up north, we got uh, that 6.2 from yesterday. So keep an eye here across the uh, northern area of the uh, well, this would be the eastern area here of the Pacific Plate, northern region of the Cascadia, and the southern end here as well. Pretty active, so we'll continue to watch that. As uh, far as the big island of Hawaii goes and the Kilauea Volcano, let's see what we have cooking out here today. Waiting on episode, uh, I think, 27 here, right? It's either 27 or 28. Leveling out a little bit here in the last few hours. Uh, it has done that before. I don't see uh, anything at the moment that would tell me that we're uh, looking at something different far as outside of these previous cycles here, 27 episodes of rinse and repeat eruptions. Um, it has done that before in a couple different ones. It's leveled out. Um, this one was a, a pretty decent leveling out, and then it shot right back up again 
for the next eruption there. So nothing of any abnormal activity. What would what would be a, an event that would cause the um, the cycle to stop or you know go off of the uh, the cycle that's been going on here would be uh, maybe some diversion below blockage up at the craters area uh, with the migrational of magma displacement somewhere else but I don't see it uh, there's really no earthquake activity happening around it just uh, we'll probably see that eruption here again in a number of days but for now just a little bit of uh, leveling out there across the inflation chart at Kilauea volcano uh, space weather activity that's another thing uh, well they were calling for a G2 G1 class storm that really never materialized here uh, nothing really became of it last night just very low grade aurora activity up there uh, across the higher regions uh, and that was due to the BZ component there mainly pointing to the north uh, I think this is pretty much done and over with I don't think we're gonna see anything uh, as far as the aurora activity stirring up here it's just uh, kind of a dud sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't right now it's not working out there in favor of, of uh, viewing auroras solar flare activity still way down into the B flare category B 8.0 we do have that one sunspot out here 41 22 um, today it's getting a little bit of different uh, complexity there within that uh, core got to watch that region there it's starting to grow in size as well maybe gaining another uh, structure to back behind here uh, but aside from that there's really not uh, not a whole lot of other sunspots out here that are of noteworthy value for now but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that I really don't think there's any stronger flare threat either uh, I myself forecasting these at 1% uh, chance or less for an X flare M flare probably around 25% or so that's fairly accurate look at that sea flare even the way down there into the 70 percent range goodness so uh yeah pretty quiet conditions there prevailing for the um solar flare activity far as uh well asteroids i heard there was a fireball out there in the what is it, southeast or towards the east over there in the states that was observed um i believe it was sometime today earlier this morning but as uh, far as any big close approaches here with the big boys, the big asteroids, I don't see anything going on in near term for now. There's still you know, quite a bit of newly discovered ones here, uh, but uh, they're all fairly safe. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather outlook here today. Got slight risk categories across areas in the yellow. Green is the marginal risk. Looks like there's a little 2% and 5% chance for some tornado activity up there around the Wisconsin, Minnesota area. So just a heads up there for that uh, spinning water vapor. Uh, a little bit of wind and uh, not so much hail threats. Mainly wind and that uh, tornado potential out there today. So just be on guard. Uh, aside from that, folks, uh, seismograph stations there. One little earthquake on Mendocino and also Anza. These are very small earthquakes. And for the most part, they'll show the ones that are happening down there in Southern California. I believe it's this latest one right here. A little point nine at 1125. That would match the Anza station down there, 1825. So that's going to be this little point, little point nine, not a nine magnitude, but a little point nine, and also some up there around Mendocino. But for whatever reason, um, the smaller quakes do not get listed up here in Northern California like they do down in Southern California. I don't know why, but that's just how it is here. Uh, so the smaller quakes, even though they're happening, they're not being uh, reported out here on the map. Uh, for now, have a uh, wonderful evening, afternoon, morning time still out here. And I'm sure it's morning out in Hawaii. Either way, have yourself a wonderful Thursday. We will see you guys back out here for the Thursday evening update, folks. Have a good one.